Okay, in this third presentation for week number one, I would like to focus on validity. In this case, we are going to focus on construct validity. Before we focus on construct validity, let's take a look at the brief definition of validity itself. This definition says that the extent to which a test measures what it should measure, that's validity. It's a pretty vague definition of validity. So to better understand the validity itself, let's take a look at different types of validity. As you see here, we can uh, indicate uh, face validity, content validity, construct validity, conversion, discriminant, and many more. Face validity can be assessed in a pilot study. So for instance, we do check whether um, participants, test takers, identify this specific test as a measure of what it's supposed to measure. So for instance, if our instruction says that this test measures uh, beliefs or reactions, then they should have the impression when they're taking the test that it truly uh, measures those aspects. Content validity, construct validity will be discussed uh, on the next slides. Construct validity uh, answers to the question uh, to what extent it, the specific test is a good measurement of the underlying theoretical concept. When it comes to content validity, we can ask a question to what extent this test, items, its element, cover specific domain. So if we create a knowledge test, then if we would like to answer to the question what's the content validity of this test, then you would ask a question to what extent this specific uh, test covers knowledge that you would like to measure. The same for scales or the aim for behavior. So if we create a test for measuring self-control, then uh, we would uh, need to uh, have a definition of self-control. If we define self-control as a ability to inhibit reactions, then we could conclude that our items should identify as many as behaviors that can be uh, used as a description for uh, self-control. So ability to resist from eating chocolates or ability not to drink alcohol, to avoid alcohol. Internal structure is an important part of uh, construct validity. It can be related to number of dimensions and also can be related to scores differences between groups. Number of dimensions is an uh, important part of it. Typically it's assessed through complex statistical analysis. So if we create a test to measure self-control and trade uh, self-control based on a theory should be rather unidimensional, should have one factor, then through this statistical analysis we should get a data indicating that we can identify only one dimension. If we create a test that should differentiate between different groups, also through statistical analysis, we should be able to identify differences between um, uh, groups, let's say healthy and ill individuals. External structure of a test is related to those two aspects, convergent validity and divergent validity. Let's take a look at Convergent validity. Typically, what we do when we test for convergent validity, we call it two measures that are related to two different constructs. Based on a theory, we can predict that those constructs, as measured using a specific tests, should be correlated with each other. So, if you would be interested in correlating workaholic measure and finding what's the validity of this test, you would like to uh, correlate workaholism with a questionnaire that measures health problems. Similar for divergent validity, but in this case, it's a validity that is uh, focused on no to little correlation between co constructs. So if you would like to assess divergent validity of specific measure, then you would use a questionnaire that should not correlate with your main measure. Let's suppose that you test um, validity of a creativity test. 
he would predict that creativity is something different, something more than just art skills. So if you would test validity of this questionnaire in a group of students, then probably you would like to correlate uh, scores uh, in this test with art skills grades. In this case, if the theory is true, then you would identify lower to uh, zero correlations between your creativity test and grades. Construct validity can be also assessed based on more complex approach. It's called multi-trait, multi-method matrix, MTMM. Let's take a look at the example. In this example, we have two different measures. We have questionnaire A and questionnaire B. And third, it's interview. It's a completely different method, but also this method enables to assess three traits that we want to investigate. Extraversion, eroticism, and agreeableness. So if you take a look at first value in the second row, 0.40, it's a value that that identifies relationship between variables extroversion and neuroticism as measured by means of method A. MTMA matrix is used to assess construct validity. Typically, this matrix also includes reliability values, reliability coefficients. In this case, those are located between parentheses in the, on the diagonal of this table. Analysis of uh, this kind of matrix focused, focuses on three different aspects. Let's take a look at the first aspect. This aspect is called heteromethod monotrait. As you see, these are correlations between the same traits, that's why we have monotrait, but across different methods. That's why we have heteromethod. So point 40, it's a correlation between two variables reflecting extraversion across two methods, questioner A and questioner B. Neuroticism across two methods, point 20, and so on. So those nine correlations, those identify convergent validity. So in other words, across two or more methods, hetero method, so more than one method, monotrait, so if uh, the same thread is measured, this kind of data help us, sorry, help us to investigate um, uh, convergent validity. Let's take a look at another example. As you see here, we have more correlations. But what is important is that we have different methods and different traits and that can be labeled as a divergent validity. As you see here, for instance, in the first triangle, values 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.15, they are obtained using different methods, so method A and method B, but also different traits, so the value 0.01, it's a correlation between extraversion and neuroticism across method A and method B. This method uh, of analyzing uh, this matrix can help us to assess divergent validity. So in other words, hetero methods, hetero traits, help us to assess divergent validity. And finally, we can identify this type of correlations or correlation patterns. Mono method, because as you see the first triangle it's method A, the second triangle is method B, and the third is method C. Those are relationship between different traits within the same method. That's why we have mono method and hetero trait. This part is labeled as method variance. So to summarize, if a single method is used, we uh, can identify mono method, but hetero trait part of the matrix. And this data help us to assess method variance. There are specific rules to assess 
construct validity using this kind of uh, approach. First of all, on average, convergent validity, so this part of uh, table across different methods with similar, the same traits, this, if we want to conclude high construct validity, on average, those values, those correlations should be higher than zero. On the other hand, that's the second type of uh, construct validity using MTMM matrix is that convergent validity should be higher than divergent validity. That makes sense, right? Because you would expect that correlation between the same traits should be, that's sensible, should be higher than divergent validity. So correlation between different traits across different methods. Thirdly, convergent validity is expected if we want to conclude high construct validity should be high on average than a method variance. That also makes sense, right? Because if we test relationship between the same traits across different methods, then you would expect that on average those correlations should be higher than correlations between different traits within one single method. And finally, the fourth element of, uh, the, of those rules is related to the analysis of patterns. We, when we apply this rule, we compare patterns. So patterns for method A and relationship between those traits and for method B. Let's take a look at an example. So for instance, let's use this uh, part of the table to analyze patterns. That's one pattern and that's the second pattern. The first pattern, values 0.40, it's obviously lower than value 0.56 but higher than the value 0.32. That's one pattern. Second pattern are values 0 0.20, 0 0.15 and 0.11. But in this case, value that is below 0.20 it's lower than similar value in the first triangle because in the first triangle the value 0.40 it's lower than 0.56 so in this case patterns are not similar but they're similar because value 0.40 is higher than value 0.32 and the same as 0.20 the second triangle is higher than 0.11 and similar patterns is for the lower part of both triangles 0.56 is higher than 0.32, the same for the second triangle. 0.15 is, of course, higher than 0.11. That's more or less the most important information about construct validity. Let's move on to criterion validity.